Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am Sam, I am an artist and uh, of course a knitting designer based in Dublin, Ireland. And uh, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, on my website and of course on Ravelry looking for Irish farm art. If you are new to my channel this is my attempt of a knitting podcast in which I share my finished works, works in progress, uh, projects that I'm working on, knitting designs that I'm publishing, and uh, acquisition, of course, other bits and bobs that are going on in my knitting life as well. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much. This channel is really, really new, and we already have quite a few subscribers, so I'm really really thankful and uh, I really hope you enjoy as well. So starting from, and I'm looking this way because all my pile is that way, uh, but I would like to start from what I'm wearing. This is my Islander sweater, is knitted uh, in JC Reni super soft wool. Don't get fooled by the name super soft because it is scratchy as hell. I'm wearing a t-shirt underneath because I really can't bear the uh, scratchiness of the wool but I absolutely love this jumper, it is so cozy and uh, kind of fluffy and really it hugs you. The pattern is from Sunness Gran and as always I'm trying to put patterns and uh, yarn indication here in the screen but if you have any questions about the pattern and all the patterns that I will be talking about, the yarns, just drop a comment below. I'm always really happy to reply to any comments. So I will say the pattern is from Sunness Gran. It's a Scandinavian um, and Norwegian, I guess, uh, uh, design company and yarn company that I absolutely love. If you have seen my first video in which I go through all my knitted jumper, you would have seen that 98% uh, of my jumpers are from Sunness Gar. This because their fit is absolutely beautiful and I never get tired and every time I knit one of those jumpers I'm absolutely sure that they fit perfectly with my shape. Uh, this jumper is knitted in one piece with raglan decreases and uh, I added a little bit of a short row situation to get the neck to fit a little better. The original pattern calls for a boat neck but I kind of really don't like boat necks or I don't think they fit my shoulders, my neck very well. So I decided to go for a more traditional, well, a more modern type of uh, uh, neck shape. Apart from that, I really didn't modify this pattern. I followed the smaller size and as a rule of thumb I go always around the 260 stitches cast on when I am knitting with a fingering weight for ply yarn. Uh, and that was of course one of the smallest sizes. What else to say? It's really beautiful um, as an impact jumper. From far away probably it looks a little bit uh, just blurry and whitish, but it has a beautiful lice uh, pattern. So basically this pattern here in which you can see all the little color stitches coming through the jumper. Uh, it's called lice because apparently resemble Lices, but I, I, I have no idea. It's full on color work from the very bottom to uh, the very top of the jumper. And it was a challenge and it was a really, really long knit. It is, of course, a bottom up because I realize I'm not able to knit uh, top down jumpers <laughs> to fit to myself. I have no idea what's going on, but eventually, at some stage, I will investigate a little bit more the possibilities of knitting a top down jumper. Going on with my other Finnish uh, objects, we have 
a pair of mittens. I don't know if you can see the motif here, but it is, of course, an owl. There is big owl there, and then on the back, a very tiny little cute one inside the tomb. This pattern is, uh, of course, available on Ravelry, is from the designer Jorid uh, Lindvik or something like that. I'm really sorry if I am mispronouncing your name. It is absolutely a beautiful design. I only have the left side here, uh, actually the right side, the left is uh, currently blocking and if you have seen my latest post on Instagram, um, I show a little bit how I block the thing, but it's completely dumped so I can't really get to uh, handle it very well. The yarn that I used here is the Drops Fable sock yarn, basically. Uh, it is a 75% wool and 25% nylon. On the colorway, dark grey and rust. It is a fingering weight yarn and the needles that I use are 2mm for the ribbing and 2.5 for the body of the mitten. I said that the pattern is really beautiful and I absolutely love the design of the owl. Although I have some maybe consideration to make on the pattern itself. First of all, instructions are quite minimal, uh, which is absolutely fine if you are an expert um, at uh, knitting mittens. I found myself having to go back and forth uh, YouTube tutorials and other resources to understand a little bit more uh, what the pattern meant, because it really doesn't walk you through all the steps of making the mitten. Especially I found for the tomb, after you increase for the gusset, the pattern just said um, leave the stitches on a piece of scrap yarn and pick them up later. And that was it, so I needed to understand what was the process around and thank God there was a lovely YouTube video from Arne and Carlos in which they describe exactly how to do that, so that was completely fine. Um, Another thing that I am concerned about is that it's massive. <laughs> if you see my hand, and I have like man hands, so they are quite big, uh, we have about uh, three or four centimeters of uh, um, room here, or positive is if you wish, which is quite um, annoying probably if you're using this on an everyday basis doesn't bother me because I know that I'm gonna use this a lot. So in time I really hope the yarn felt a little bit and uh, um, the gap will be um, shorter. Something else are a couple of errors in the pattern itself. When you start decreasing for the top of the mitten, the pattern sta says start increasing <laughs> for the top of the mitten. As well, there is a couple of uh, stitch counts that don't really make sense. I believe it's because the pattern has been written in Norwegian and then translated in, into English, so probably there was some translation issue. Uh, nothing that someone can't really uh, pick and uh, go through. The pattern has been made hundreds of times, there are hundreds of projects on robbery, so people are enjoying this very much, and I did as well. Just a few considerations. I would probably need this again, using, first of all, a different type of yarn. Uh, Drop Fable is wonderful, but uh, it is quite cold and uh, leaves a lot of gaps on the um, fabric itself. So I would probably use some uh, fluffier yarn, something like uh, a mix alpaca or Norwegian wool um, or something that will give that loftiness that I'm a little bit missing here. 
Something else that I would consider is using different colors because, of course, you can kind of tell that uh, it's an owl, but uh, it's not really apparent. So I probably will use some more contrasting colors next time. And the third thing that I would do is going down a needle size for everything so that it might fit perfectly. The problem with the size is that I actually followed the gauge of the, the pattern, so I don't know. It's probably someone with very, very big hands. <laughs> but yeah, here you go, my first or second finish object. The next finish object that I have, it's a cowl that I will attempt to wear although my hair is already messy enough, but we'll see what we can do. So, I really hope you can tell how it looks like. This is my uh, design for a cowl. It has been uh, knitted using Drops Charisma, which is a DK 100% wool yarn and I'm absolutely in love with this. It's so warm and so cozy. As you know, uh, Drops Charisma is not my favorite yarn. I had it in uh, my stash for quite a while, so I was trying to figure out if I could come up with a pattern or something like that. Originally, this pattern was meant to be a jumper. If you've seen my previous video, I was talking about a very simple color work uh, bottom-up jumper with a raglan yoke. Knitting through the jumper, I found that I wasn't quite happy with uh, the gouge and I wasn't quite happy with uh, the overall look of the jumper. My idea uh, was to... Uh, let me take this off. It's getting so warm here. My idea was to have the uh, pattern here on the bust before the sleeves uh, um, start so that someone could concentrate on the pattern and then start the sleeves, concentrate on the sleeves and then start the raglan, the curries, concentrate on that. Uh, so a step by step how to knit a strand color work jumper without any fuss. Uh, so you can actually concentrate and focus on a single piece of a new technique, so kind of an educational piece. I knitted it all and uh, last night I realized that I wasn't happy at all, uh, the jumper looked like uh, some sort of sausage. I tried to block it as well quite uh, thoroughly but that didn't work, so last night I took my scissors and my needles and um, I was about to unravel everything and frog the entire jumper and reuse the yarn for something else. But the color work is absolutely beautiful and uh, I really loved the contrast as well and the yarn and the fabric was very soft. Uh, I just didn't want to frog an entire piece of color work. So I realized that uh, this could turn into a pretty beautiful cowl and a pretty beautiful pattern as well, really easy to follow. So you can tell it's a little bit rough and ready, this because I worked on this last night and I really wanted to get the pattern out today, which is actually out now, so if you are, want to knit this, uh, go and check it. Uh, but the idea is that you will have a big piece of ribbing in the inside of the cowl which will uh, bring the cowl to fit your neck quite well and quite snugly and then the color work on the exterior of the cowl. You need a piece of ribbing 6 cm, then 12 cm of um, the, the pattern other 12 centimeters of uh, the border and then another 6 centimeters of ribbing on the top on circular needles so it's very 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 and I'm stressing very easy to follow. When you're done with all these measurements which are all described in the pattern quite well 
uh, then you cast off and with the darning needle you sew in the bottom and the top, the edges of the two, together with, from the inside, leaving a little space to turn the cowl inside out so that the sewing piece doesn't appear. I think this is a quite clever way to construct a cowl because at the very end you will have two fabrics that will cover your neck. It's like um, a double cowl with the ribbing inside and the color work outside. If you're tired of the color work and if you want something more kind of formal, you can turn it inside out and use the ribbing pattern on the outside and the color work inside. So it's a double face as well, if you wish. Uh, I'm uh, absolutely happy how this turned out and I really, really recommend you to check it out. The pattern is in my rubbery store. And I think we are already done with Finnish objects. I haven't been knitting so, so much this week or this couple of weeks. It's been crazy busy in work, so this is probably the only thing. And I was focusing on that uh, phantomatic jumper for way too long to actually be able to knit anything else. Uh, but I'm happy that I managed to get the mittens done and the cowl uh, sorted as well. And of course, taking the photos and publishing the pattern on Ravelry. In terms of stuff that I'm working on, I haven't uh, resigned my idea of uh, publishing a knitting uh, pattern for a sweater. And I was um, kind of browsing Ravelry looking for a new sweater to make from another designer and I found that I was adding to my queue more and more of those uh, Sunday style um, jumpers which are basically lice pattern jumper with drops, sleeves and a color work piece on the yoke side. Uh, very intricate color work design and very beautiful jumpers overall. So on that I did realize that uh, why am I gonna make a jumper from another designer once I can make my own? I have kind of the skills and uh, kind of capability and ideas to make my own design. So getting into the idea of the Sun Style um, jumper, I cast on this thing that is of course really messy now because I'm not a good uh, podcaster, but uh, here we go. So I've cast on my ideal 260 stitches in the round using a uh, four ply fingering weight yarn which is drops uh, north so this yarn here is quite fluffy this has a percentage of alpaca uh, which if i'm right is 45 percent alpaca then there is a 25 percent uh, um, nylon or synthetic fiber and uh, some wool so, on paper, color work would really look nice with this and the fabric will be warm and lofty due to both the alpaca and the wool. And the overall result would be really durable due to the polyamide or uh, synthetic fiber. The thing is that this is such a slippery yarn. It's like knitting with uh, baby alpaca or baby merino, something extremely slippery uh, and um, shiny type of thing. So I kind of need my hands to get used to the yarn. But so far we have the lice pattern going on. I will knit about 45 centimeters of this and then start with uh, my pattern, my created pattern, which will be probably my alpine uh, pattern, the one that I use for the um, uh, hat that I was talking about last week. 
and that will be a very small um, repetition pattern uh, going up from the middle of the chest until the end of the yoke. It will have uh, drop sleeves because I found that although they require some sticking, they are the better uh, fitted uh, sleeve that I could find for my body. But if they work for my body, probably they would work for other people as well, I suppose. But I will keep you posted. It's a very long work because of the color work. I probably should uh, just use longer cables and try it on before going any further, just because it is really slippery, so I have no idea about the stretch. If I go back, I probably would use a 100% wool yarn like this JC Rennie, but the consideration that I took before starting was that uh, I have knitted a lot with uh, pure wool and very sticky yarn and the color work has been quite of a pain uh, generally with this type of yarns uh, because the yarn just stick together so it's really difficult to work at the speed at a pace when you have the yarn clogging together in color work uh, especially because I hold, in the continental way, two strands of yarn on one finger. So I really wanted to make my life a little bit easier and using this more slippery yarn or more kind of soft and not sticky would uh, make my work go faster, my life easier and overall have a quicker and nicer and less scratchy result. As I mentioned, this yarn uh, drops Nord is not uh, um, sticky at all and it happened that I lost a couple of stitches and was a nightmare to uh, get them back on the needles, so we'll see where it brings us and it probably won't be ready before Christmas, but uh, I really hope I will get some time to knit on it and uh, get some nice progress. If the pattern won't be out there by Christmas, for sure, it will be in the new year and probably the jumper will be ready by Christmas. Another thing I am working on is not really a finished work or a project, but it's more a learning a technique, is this one. This is uh, just a piece of ribbing that I am trying to knit using the double knitting technique. I'm not really familiar with that technique, so rather than improvising with a full-on knitting pattern, I just got a piece of ribbing. These are probably around 60 stitches altogether and try to use this new technique. This basically will form two fabrics, one over the top and one of the back, with uh, the two different colors together. And then eventually the color will interchange to each other, creating, of course, a color work pattern. I'm knitting this using two giant balls of JC Arani yarn, of course, one of my favorite yarns, not just because it's uh, beautiful and 100% wool, but as well because it is really, really cheap. For one cone, you would spend around 20 euro, which is amazing. A consideration, though, is that after all the shebangs that are going on in Britain, it's quite, uh, it's getting quite difficult to um, get this yarn from uh, Britain. So I really hope some Irish firm will start uh, getting more of this yarn. Otherwise, we need to go through Europe uh, to get some yarn. I know that uh, is it Holstgarn does something similar with their uh, super, super soft yarn. We will see, but for now I think I have plenty. This is probably seven jumper quantities. 
and I would like to spend a couple of minutes talking about acquisitions. I don't have many this week as uh, last week uh, or a couple of weeks ago was a big haul from my local yarn shop of Drops Yarn and other yarns so this week I really had to maximize my spend and really not buying random stuff just because I really want all the yarn uh, in the island of Ireland. So let me give you some background. Working on this cowl here, which is knitted in Drops Charisma DK, I realized that I'm not able to knit in DK yarn. The gouge in the jumper was uh, completely wrong, or in the original project was completely wrong, and uh, I really didn't know how to work with thicker yarn. And I know that DK is not the thickest yarn possible, so it is. Um, it was quite an eye opener for me to understand that. Uh, I'm really used to knit with fingering weight, sport weight, four ply yarn, but I'm not really used to knit with a DK or a thicker yarn, and I probably need to improve my skills in this side of the knitting world. Because, of course, DK yarn is probably the most popular, and uh, there are other yarns rather than um, fingering weights and very thin yarns. As well, I found quite difficult to work with thicker needles. They are really tough on my hands and, uh, I don't know, it's a piece of work that I really need to do. So, considering that, I got a couple of balls of Pierre Gint from... Uh, is it from Sadness Ground? Yeah, of course. Uh, which is 100% Norwegian wool and this is the colorway denim, if I'm right. And uh, yeah, it's um, a lovely yarn. Of course, you know about this yarn because it's super popular. And uh, I was actually browsing their website for knitting patterns, but my eyes were caught on this lovely yarn. It's quite um, inexpensive. So I got, of course, a jumper quantity. I have only two here, but I got a jumper quantity of this yarn and a contrasting color as well. The idea is to make another big Marius sweater, like the classic blue, white and red one, uh, for probably next winter, considering the speed of my knitting lately, but that will come up. I'm really excited to work with this yarn, because uh, rather than the Charisma one, which feels a little bit plasticky if you want, this really feels like it's good quality wool and uh, it's probably going to be a little bit uh, less itchy than uh, Drops Charisma as well. So, first acquisition of the day. I'm really excited to work with uh, um, a Sunness Garn yarn because they are absolutely my favorite company ever. The second thing that I got, uh, uh, talking about the thicker yarn, is this yarn here. This is a iron weight yarn. Um, it's from Adriafil and it's the a yarn called Zebrino, which uh, in Italian means uh, little zebra actually. And um, I suppose because the yarn is variegated with yellow, orange and reds, this is uh, the orange shade and it is absolutely uh, stunning as a yarn. It's really thick, really lofty. Um, I was quite um, impetuous in choosing this yarn and buying it online, clicking everywhere, and I didn't realize that it is 47% acrylic. I tend to avoid using acrylic yarns or yarns that have a lot of um, manufacturer fibers, uh, nylon, polyamide, uh, acrylic, because I, first of all, really conscious of the impact on the environment and then as well on what uh, I'm wearing after all. I feel like if I can stick with natural fibers, the better. 
but I was attracted by the color of this yarn and uh, I was looking for thicker yarns to, of course, uh, once again improve my skills and knitting with thicker yarns. So, yeah, I got a couple of balls of this. This probably will turn into a scarf or something like that. Considering the amount of acrylic, it is probably going to be really durable. So, so again, a scarf would be probably a nice, big, lofty thing to wear and uh, throw around without really caring much. It's not cheap, though. This ball here was about 6 euro, 5, 6 euro, which is, uh, for me, kind of a, a leap in uh, price, yarn-wise. I know that you guys buy very expensive yarns, but uh, at this stage I'm quite uh, conscious of uh, the amount of money I spend on yarns. So, yeah, but here we go. Adria Phil Zebrino on Colway Orange. And then, lastly, if you have seen my last podcast the other week, I was talking about uh, resources that I use for uh, creating my patterns and uh, knitting in general. And since then, I added to my collection this book here, which you all probably know already. This is a thousand Japanese knitting and crocheting uh, stitches from Neon Vogue and it's published by Tuttle. It is a stitch dictionary. Without giving away much, I'll show you just one page. Um, it's basically all patterns of color work and other type of designs, lace, different type of ribbings. The beautiful thing is that it gives you a lot of instructions on how to read the patterns that I are proposing, which is extremely good when you're trying to create new patterns, but as well to learn a little bit more. I haven't ever tried any lace pattern so far, but I'm really interested in applying some cabling, for example, or some sort of modern looking laces to, I don't know, some future patterns. So this will turn very handy very soon. If you have any recommendation for any other books, uh, please let me know. I would really appreciate that. That is uh, basically it for this week. I really hope you did enjoy this little podcast. I'm really sorry it was a little bit all over the place, but uh, yeah, I'm still learning and uh, once again, if you want to have a look at my Instagram or Ravelry page, uh, look out for Irish Farm Art. And I'm uh, on YouTube as well with another channel looking to share a little bit more of my art endeavors, so everything is linked below in the description. I wish you a very lovely weekend. Bye-bye!